Hello everyone, hi I'm Jay and today welcome to this Light V2 tutorial. I'm going to be teaching you the basics on the Point Light V2 and the Spotlight V2 and then I'm going to go in depth and teach you guys everything to know about the new dome light as well as specular lighting and softness lighting. Alright, without further ado, let's get started. Let's start by opening our watch, then heading to backpack, then pressing tools at the top bar, and then hitting use on maker pen. Then let's open our tools menu, select palette, we can drag this one out in our world space. Let's go to circuits v2. Let's scroll down until we find CV2 gadgets. And let's start by spawning a point light v2. So this is a point light. A point light is going to eliminate a radius in a uh, spherical shape. So essentially, it's pretty much lighting up this wall, this floor, but it's doing it in a, uh, a circular slash spherical radius shape. So what we can do with our point light we can do basic configurations by opening our tools menu, hitting configure, clicking on our point light. This will open our config menu on our tools menu, which we can drag out if we want. And then from there, we can do options like, uh, do we want the light to emit by default? So this turns it on or off. We can change the intensity. We can change the range. The range is the radius. We can change specular contribution, which we'll we'll get over that in a little bit. And for more advanced uh, users, you can also choose if you want to sync it or not. I'm not going to go in depth with syncing and unsyncing, but if you guys are interested in seeing a tutorial on synced versus unsynced lights, let me know and I'll be more than happy to show you. So some quick things we can do to set up. Let's say we want to do a light that toggles on and off. Let's quickly look at our palette. If your palette is currently no longer pulled out, you can pull it again, once again, by opening your tools menu, clicking and holding palette, and then dragging it down. Just like that. Once again, let's go to circuits V2 and CV2 gadgets. And let's spawn a button. So, with button V2, what we can do is open our tools menu, select wire, and what we can have is whenever you press this button, we can have the execution turn on the light. But as soon as you let go, so when the button is released, we can turn it off. And so if we try it now, we can push, let go. And this is going to let us have a toggleable button in this way. Next, let's spawn a spotlight. So once again, go to CV2 gadgets in your palette, select Spotlight V2, and spawn it. This one has a couple of differences between point light. Uh, first of all, it will only shine in a cone radius. Uh, so you can see the direction it's pointing at uh, with the render, the 3D render of the light, which shows this way. You can also configure the angle. We'll see the spotlight has one new setting. Angle. Ch changing the angle of a light or a spotlight will change the, it basically changes the angle of the cone. So I don't have a really good way to visualize this, but angle can change it if you don't want to move the light, but also Moving it back and forth can also change the angle, but next I want to go in-depth with the brand new light we added Which you'll find under circuits v2 CV2 gadgets Dome light v2 take note this prop is currently only under beta and So it will not be available for now unless you turn on beta So on this one we have a couple of more settings First of all, I'd like to mention a big difference between a Spotlight V2 and a Dome Light V2. The max angle on a Spotlight V2, I believe, is 90 degrees. So if I go to angle, 
the max I can do is 90. So if I move it back, we can kind of see this is as big as it can go. It can't really go further. But with a dome light, there are a couple of exceptions. Let's put our dome light on the ceiling real quick. We can set its angle to 180. We can change the range so it lights up the room brightly. We can also tweak the intensity. And so we've got a couple of new things. So we also have the softness setting. So a light currently, point light and spotlight cannot have their softness settings changed. So they'll remain pretty soft around 50, which is the default. We can tweak that to all the way to 100 if we want. And you'll kind of notice the difference as I swap between it. Notice any differences? So, when a light is has no softness, it's going to cut on corners very easily. But when it does, it's going to smoothen out and kind of get rid of these edges. So it's going to fade out uh, gradually. And this can also be changed using circuits. Uh, if we look at the... Whoops. It's currently upside down, so let me rotate that for you guys. Uh, if we take a look at the circuit board, we can set the softness as well as the angle. And another big difference is the max angle on a dome light is 180 degrees, which is twice as much as a spotlight. Which means it can do a half a sphere of radius, but not the other half. Which is really useful if you're doing like ceiling lights and you've got a room right above, and you don't want that room to get any lighting whatsoever, similar how we're doing here, because if you notice, my maker pen and my hands don't have any lights applied to them, and as soon as I'm under, they do. Using a point light to do this would result in the room above getting a bunch of unnecessary lighting that you probably didn't really want. Next, let's go ahead and configure once again. And I will be showing you guys specular contribution. I'll be using the dome light for this example, but this is a new setting on the point light and the spotlight. That said, give me a little bit to prepare some objects to showcase a difference. All right, so I've prepared a couple of examples. Here we have a glass pane that has no reflections whatsoever. We look under, no reflections. Same with this shiny metal sphere. There are currently no reflections given to it. And this is where specular contribution comes in. So let's go ahead and configure our dome light again. And let's start tweaking this number up. And already we can notice that there's a difference in that sphere. It's actually reflecting the light. If we look under the glass, we can also notice that it changes. We can bump this all the way up to the max, but this might be way too much. So let's just put a little bit of specular contribution. And there we have it. We've got ourselves a sphere that can actually reflect and a glass that can actually reflect. And that said, you can go ahead and try to change the color on your light. So let's say I'm gonna make my light green. It's pretty shiny, it reflects. I'm gonna bump up the range and add specular contribution. And we can see, we can actually see that it's also reflecting this. So it's reflecting the sphere or the sphere is reflecting the light, and if I take it out of the range, it stops reflecting. There's also another light that is being reflected, which is this one. This one is actually the sunlight. Uh, the sunlight will always be reflected, so that's something to take note when making specular lighting. We can also change how, when we move the object, the reflections move because of the location of the object compared to the lighting. So this is what specular lighting does. And in my opinion, it's amazing. It basically finally lets us use shiny metal in ways where the lights that we have in our rooms reflects 
on that shiny metal. So if you haven't used this yet, I definitely, definitely recommend that you use it to bring a little bit more realism in your rooms with reflections. It's truly amazing. Thank you for watching! I can't wait to see what you guys are going to make using these new lighting changes. If you would like to learn more about creation, be sure to check out the Creative Campus or go to recroom.com slash creative to learn all about our creative programs. You can join the official Rec Room Club to connect with creators and learn some new skills. If you like these videos, please like and subscribe to Everything Rec Room. See everyone!